is my home. This is where I was raised. At least four tornadoes confirmed in West Michigan by the National Weather Service and people lucky to be alive. So fortunate and no, no injuries. As the cleanup begins, communities are coming together. It's definitely worth living in a small town when everybody knows and cares about you. We have reaction plus the resources available to victims. With a bunch of friends and family and little equipment, hopefully it'll be done in no time. And after this weekend's active weather, I'm forecasting a much quieter work week and it feels more comfortable too. That forecast is coming up shortly. Plus, local breaking news. You're watching News Channel 3, live at 6.30. We're getting an aerial view of the destruction of one of yesterday's tornadoes. This footage of Bangor was sent to us by a viewer. You can see the tornado's path just north of downtown as it headed northeast, uprooting trees and damaging buildings and homes. The National Weather Service says it was at least it was one of at least four tornadoes to tear through our area Saturday. Bangor and Grand Junction, just a few miles away, saw some of the worst damage. News Channel 3's Walter Smith Randolph is live tonight in Bangor with a look at how officials and neighbors are surveying the damage. Walter. Brittany, we're talking at least four tornadoes sweeping across West Michigan, but we're told that Bangor bore the brunt of the damage here. And if you take a walk with me here along Morrison Avenue, you can see why. You can see the power lines are down. The trees are all over the place. The utility crews are out here trying to get the power back on. The National Weather Service says this is moderate damage. Why is it moderate? Well, take a look. You can see the stop sign bent in half, the gutters falling off the side of this house, and trees, they are really everywhere. The National Weather Service says this is moderate because while there is damage all around the place, no fatalities were reported and the homes here stayed on the ground. You didn't know nothing about it. Living in a ranch home with no basement, Ron Pitcher says he's fortunate. It's unbelievable. I mean, just, it's amazing. We're, we're so fortunate and no, no injuries. Fortunate because of damage across the street and behind his home. Luckily, we haven't lost any structures, but... This is something people are going to remember for a long time. While neighbors clean up, forecasters like Bob Dukeshare at the National Weather Service in Grand Rapids surveying the damage across West Michigan. This is the area that produced the damage, a long area of wind damage that, that moved from Bangor all the way up toward Rockford. Dukeshare says this map showing the line of the storms, at least four tornadoes were spotted. Back here in Bangor, you can see how strong this storm was. I'm standing in the base of a tree. The winds uplifted this tree and put it on its side that dodge nitro the victim of this falling tree you can also see this power pole at a completely 90 degree angle it looks like a lot of um, damage probably in the ef0 ef1 range duke sheriff's team working here saturday to put warnings out and now they're on the ground assessing the damage what we were seeing was a lot of trees down trees onto homes but we didn't see a whole lot of structural damage um, I think probably some of the highest damage is going to be down in the Bangor uh, Grand Junction areas. We're very fortunate. We've been around checking in with neighbors and stuff, and other people, neighbors been out checking their neighbors, and uh, no one was, there was no injuries. So we're very fortunate. Back live here on Morrison Avenue, we're in a neighbor's front yard, and this is typical what you're seeing block after block of these trees coming down on the side of the houses, and the trees really in the front yards. There are contractors all over the place. There are neighbors out here trying to help each other clean up the damage, so they are very uh, helpful around here and very hopeful that this will all be cleaned up within the coming week. For now, we're live in Bangor. Walter Smith Randolph, News Channel 3. Walter, thank you. Dozens of people displaced turned to the Red Cross for aid and shelter following those tornadoes. News Channel 3's Nikki Zizaza is live in Wyoming at a shelter set up for some of those victims. Nikki. That's right, Britt. Families looking for assistance can find it right here inside Lee High School in, Mi in Wyoming because it's one of the shelters set up by the Red Cross after Saturday's tornadoes. The Red Cross of West Michigan is helping with shelter, food, and emotional support after severe weather slammed the area. Crews have been conducting street-by-street -street damage and assessing for tornado victims to determine how many families will need help. The Red Cross is still in the emergency phase of their response. Their top priorities right now, providing safe shelter, supplies, and meals. 
Volunteers with the agency tell me they anticipated a larger crowd, but say neighbors have been stepping up to offer help. People have stated that they are being helped by community members, that the communities are coming together to help each other, and but they like to know that this resource is here in case they need it. And volunteers here tell me that anyone can stop by who is in need to take a warm shower or if they just want to get some rest. And I'm told that this location is expected to close sometime between 8 and 9. For now, I'm live in Wyoming. Nikki Zizaza, News Channel 3. All right, Nikki, cleanup is underway in many communities. News Channel 3's Alex Jokic continues our team coverage in Bangor where people are working together to help one another. The sights around town are extremely shocking. The tornado ripped huge trees out of the earth. You can see a jumble of roots about twice my height behind me here. This tree came crashing down onto a home. This small town was no match for a big storm. The tornado blazed a trail of devastation through Bangor. Friendly streets now filled with caution tape, lined with splintered trees, crushed cars and battered homes. It's a sight Brittany Holmes couldn't bear to see. This is my home. This is where I was raised. So that's why I want to give back to my community. She sprang into action, organizing a grassroots group of volunteers overnight who are now going home to home, helping the community pick itself back up again. Among them, Jennifer Barber and her daughter. They were driving home when it struck without warning. And all these trees just yeah, kind of fell all around the house, on top of the house, and um, we just kind of froze. The Van Buren County Sheriff's Department is estimating hundreds of thousands of dollars in damage throughout the area. And when it comes to cleanup, every little bit counts. Well, we just thought it'd be good for the community to help them out. Everybody here knows everybody, and people say that's a bad thing about Bangor, but to me it's a good thing because I know almost everybody here, and that's why it hurts my heart that this happened, and I want to help. Even with all of these extra people pitching in to help, this cleanup effort is far from over. It'll go on for at least the next couple of days. Again, this group is a grassroots group. They're organizing on Facebook. If you'd like to join them, we'll post a link to their page on ours. That's WWMT.com. In Bangor, Alex Jokic, News Channel 3. It's also a community effort in Allegan County. The town of Hamilton was slammed by a tornado damaging dozens of homes. News Channel 3's Mara Thompson spoke with people who are beginning to pick up the pieces. We burn a lot of firewood. So I got firewood for years. Homeowners in Hamilton are trying to look on the bright side after a tornado wreaked havoc in their community. I mean, we got the mess to contend with and uh, to clean up, but that we can handle with a bunch of friends and family and little equipment. Hopefully it'll be done in no time. Dave DeVries says he doesn't know how he got so lucky. Trees fell just right to barely hit his home and missed his friend's Ford Mustang that was in the driveway. Extremely lucky. While some residents were able to get away with very little damage, other families are seeing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth but say it's a relief to live in a community that's so close-knit. Hamilton is a very loving and helping community. Everybody was here right after it was happened, helping take care of things, and if everybody was all right. A lot of offers for where to stay, where to go, food with the horses, everything. It's just an awesome community. The house Carrie grew up in is now barely standing, but she's just happy her parents and everyone else in town are okay. It's definitely worth living in a small town when everybody knows and cares about you and is actually coming to check on you because they care. In Hamilton, Mara Thompson, News Channel 3. A warning tonight from the Coast Guard. People are being urged to stay off of break walls and piers during hazardous weather. The Coast Guard says high winds and waves knocked two people off of a break wall along Lake Michigan, about 30 miles west of Traverse City. One person managed to get out of the water. A second person had to be rescued. With just a few sprinkles today and much cooler temperatures. Boy, oh boy, what a difference a day can make. 
Meteorologist Christina Anthony has a first look at your forecast. Christina, it felt like fall out there. Yeah, that's because yesterday's storm system that wreaked havoc across West Michigan is still sort of under an influence on West Michigan because we're seeing that area of low pressure departing to the northeast and those west northwest winds wrapping around it. That's creating that scattered shower activity that you see uh, moving into our area, moving into locations like Allegan County, Ottawa County, and even making it into parts of Kalamazoo. As Brittany mentioned, these are just some light showers. We're talking about sprinkles, nothing of the strong to severe variety. Tonight, it turns cool. We have fewer showers around as that area of low pressure continues to move away from the state. That will allow those skies to clear by tomorrow morning. You're waking up to the 50s, Brittany, and you'll need the sweater for a few of these mornings coming up, letting you know when temperatures warm back to around 80 degrees. That's coming up in minutes. All right, and you can stay up to date on current conditions and monitor live radar at WWMT.com. And be sure to download our News Channel 3 weather app where you can customize the forecast for your area. That's available for Android and Apple devices. Deputies are asking for help finding a missing teen in Ottawa County. 16-year-old Gary Van Oort was last seen around 9 last night in Grand Haven and is believed to be without his medication or cell phone. Deputies say he also goes by the name Bear. He was last seen in a wooded area near 152nd Avenue in Lincoln Street in Grand Haven. Van Oort was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt, red shirt, and black camouflage pants. Anyone with information should call the Ottawa County Sheriff's Department or Silent Observer. An Amber Alert is canceled for a five-year-old Port Huron boy. Police say Douglas Ball is safe. They found him with his father around 8.30 this morning at a mobile home park in Oakland County. The young boy was reported missing after his mother was found dead in a Port Huron home. Police say her death is being investigated as a homicide. The little boy's father was taken into custody. An Ottawa County man surfing with his brother drowns in Lake Michigan. The sheriff's office says the men were by the north pier of Pigeon Lake this afternoon when one of the brothers, a 60-year-old man, started struggling. Deputies tell us the other brother tried to get him back to shore but couldn't as they battled five-foot waves and a rip current. The man's body was recovered a short time later. A boil water advisory is in place for a portion of Kalamazoo following a water main break. The affected area is right there on your screen. It happened on Winchell Avenue between Tipperary Road and Oakland Drive. Crews were making repairs today. The city says gate valves were closed to isolate the area of that break, resulting in a loss of pressure. People living in that affected area are encouraged to boil their tap water for two minutes. The city says there have been no confirmed tests showing bacteria in the water supply system. Five people, including a pregnant woman, are found dead in a home. It's obviously that there was a, some type of instrument other than a firearm used on it. And investigators say it's like nothing they've ever seen before. Several adults, including a pregnant woman, are found murdered in a home in southern Alabama. Total 20-year career as a prosecutor, and I've never seen a, a scene where there were five people that were brutally and viciously murdered. Investigators say the suspect's girlfriend and a three-month-old baby survived Saturday's attack at a home about 35 miles outside of Mobile. 27-year-old Derek Deerman turned himself in hours after police say he went into the house and attacked the people inside using firearms and other weapons. After the killings, police say he kidnapped his girlfriend and the baby. They were later freed. A day of mourning in Turkey after a suicide bomber attacks a wedding party. At least 50 people died in yesterday's attack near the border with Syria. Police say the bomber was between 12 and 14 years old. It's even more deadly than the Istanbul airport attack back in June that left 44 dead. No one has claimed responsibility for this bombing, but Turkey's president is blaming ISIS. And after multiple tornadoes touched down this weekend, I'm tracking a cooler air tonight and quieter weather for the work week. Join us. That's minutes away. All right, welcome to the end of your weekend. Almost 
into the work week, right? Getting ready to grab that cup of coffee after what was a very active and uh, devastating weekend for many folks in West Michigan after multiple tornadoes touched down. Uh, much quieter setup here in your headlines. It's turning cold tonight. That's really the only thing to talk about this evening and into tomorrow besides just a few of those light showers and sprinkles. No severe weather into the work week. Mild and nice for your Monday. Uh, then thunderstorms. We'll be trying more thunderstorms that's into Wednesday and Thursday thinking that these develop mainly late on your Wednesday and mainly early Thursday before we finally give way to a much better upcoming weekend. It's 71 degrees right now in South Haven. You'll remember this morning if you were following us uh, that we said that those winds were going to be pretty impressive and picking up waves, creating some strong rip currents as well. Let's take you outside and show you the view over South Haven. A, kind of a turbulent view of that water over Lake Michigan and it's going to stay that way until the overnight hours and early Monday. So no swimming, even a small craft advisory in effect too. Here's something that you're feeling in a good way from uh, yesterday's cold front, right? It's what's creating those windy conditions, those cooler conditions, but also feeling much more pleasant behind that front. Here you still have dew points in the 70s stretching across the East Coast, but behind it, uh, dew points in the 50s. That's what's making it feel really nice outside. You're actually able to open up the windows, though you still have to worry about those car windows, right? Satellite and radar showing that exiting area of low pressure spinning counterclockwise uh, well off to the northeast but it's producing those west northwest winds uh, wrapping around it and that's what's leading to uh, some of these areas of rain and it looks like we have some moderate rain working its way off of uh, Lake Michigan here and it's heading towards if we look towards uh, Holland and South Haven so into Allegan County here that's when we're going to see that shower moving in again we're just talking about some light rain no storms to work with that area of red and orange just showing possibly some light to moderate rain working its way across I-196 shortly. Hour by hour model keeps those scattered showers in the picture through the later evening hours. By Monday morning though, we're going to shape up pretty nicely, turning clear and temperatures are going to turn cool as well, falling from the 60s at 11 to the 50s by tomorrow morning. You need the sweater as you're waking up, heading back to work, some kids heading back to school. Uh, by lunchtime, temperatures in the 70s and we stay relatively cool for Monday afternoon. We get rid of those winds too. It's still a bit breezy outside. Winds between uh, 15 and 20, 15 and 20 miles an hour, gusting higher than that. Temperatures around the 70 degree mark, 72 Kalamazoo, 70 degrees in Allegan. We'll see those falling into the 50s tonight. Again, as we look at our temperature trend in Brittany, your seven day forecast shows much quieter weather Monday, Tuesday, and for the upcoming weekend. All right, Christina, the first AP College football poll of the season is out. Brian Kaufman has the details on where Michigan and Michigan State rank. That's next in sports. Preseason college football polls are funny because they don't really matter. It's rare that a team starts the season as number one and ends there, so they really aren't worth paying attention to. But every year when it comes out, all fans, myself included, can't get enough. The first Associated Press college football poll of the season is officially out, so let's dig in. Michigan comes in at number seven as the hype builds surrounding Jim Harbaugh's second year leading the Wolverines. Michigan State, even with all the talent they lost at skill positions, checking in at number 12. Defending champ Alabama is one. Defending runner-up Clemson, number two, with Oklahoma, Florida State, and LSU rounding out the top five. Series finale between the Tigers and Red Sox this afternoon at Comerica Park. What a day from Justin Upton. Third inning, 2 nothing Tigers. And wow, he gets every bit of that one. 14th long ball of the year for Jay Up. A three-run shot. 5 nothing Detroit through three. Next at bat for Upton in the fifth. And I promise this isn't a replay. Again off Henry Owens. Again to left. Again the bat flip because he knew he got it. Second three-run shot of the day makes it 8-0. Justin Verlander would cruise from there. The Tigers earn the series split. They win it today. Final score 10-5. Some good news for the Lions on the injury front. Running back Amir Abdullah practiced Saturday in a regular jersey. It's blue, not the red no-contact jersey that he's been wearing for the first time in camp. It remains unclear if Abdullah will be cleared to play in the Lions' third preseason game as he continues to work his way back from off-season shoulder surgery. 
But head coach Jim Caldwell, just happy to have him moving along the road to recovery. Got some special traits that you uh, you don't uh, you know just don't happen every single day or with a, a player. Just in terms, you know, he can he can run, make you miss, catch the ball. I mean, he's a well-rounded individual and certainly can help us in a number of ways. We follow doctor's orders. We work right through it. It's a medical um, situation that dictates everything for us. Preseason game number three for the Lions set for Saturday on the road at Baltimore. And second game of the year for defending MAC champ Western Michigan women's soccer on the road to Indiana today. And check that out. Mm -hmm. They win it two to nothing. It was also, by the way, a battle of the Loy Norix Labadies. Grace now plays for IU. Jane's at Western. So Jane now <laughs> has some family bragging rights. <laughs> two and oh on the year for the Broncos. <laughs> Very cool. Thank you, Brian. A seven-day forecast brought to you by Old National Bank pulls in some cooler weather for Monday. Still talking about the upper 70s. Average is closer to 80, and you're waking up to the 50s. At least it's quiet. That will change by Wednesday and Thursday. Some more noisemakers uh, in the forecast then. Not tracking any severe weather at this time. Of course, that's still three to four days out. That could change, and we'll keep you posted. You know, a few people were tempted to break out the sweaters or the jackets this morning. It really <laughs> felt like With the fall. wind? Yeah, for Ooh, sure. Kind of nice. Liked it. Not sure I'm ready for them, but we'll see. We'll see. All right, we are back at 10 on the CW7. We hope to see you here at 11 on News Channel 3. Have a good night.